Hey guys, how's it going and welcome back. So I'd like to take just a second here to thank once again airgunsource.ca for sending me this Diana Trail Scout in 22 caliber to check out and review for you fine folks. And uh, yeah, I love this gun. It's awesome. All right, so we're looking at $249.95, I think it is, on their website. Yep, $249.95 plus tax, of course, and shipping um, for this gun. Now, this is Canada, of course. Now, 22 caliber rated at 495 feet per second. Doesn't say up to on the website. However, this gun runs 495. It'll even run 499 with a 14.3 grain pellet, which is a standard weight pellet. Uh, CO2 power plant, three bottles to run this sucker, okay? Now, even though they say in the manual you could lo load one bottle in and still fire the gun, they're full of it. It doesn't happen. Um, you must have all three bottles, okay? And all full at the time and puncture all three all at the same time, too, which is kind of cool that it does that. And it works great with Crossman bottles. It'll work great with Sig Sauer, with Umarex bottles, whatever, okay? Whop them in, away you go, ignite them, and you're good to shoot. Um, I've been using Crossman bottles in it because they're a lot more easier to get my hands on. I do have a few guns that do absolutely have to run different brands. So I have to have different brands of CO2 in the house for some of my different guns. Now, this thing has claimed to get 100 plus shots uh, in the 495 version. And it certainly will do that. I'm at already over 100 shots with these first three bottles and still plenty of power to keep shooting at least my 14 and a half grain pellets. It doesn't have enough left over to actually stay dead accurate with the Barracudas because um, they're also a 21.14 grain pellet. They're heavy buggers. Um, however, they do produce nine foot pounds of energy out of the gun at 435 feet per second. Check out this gun's unboxing, chronograph, and grouping test. Now, the grouping test was actually done um, with open sights at 10 meters. I have an accuracy test separate using the RWS Super Point Extras at 14.5 grain um, as a separate video. All right, and that was used at 10 meters with bipod this time. Okay, so I have installed a bipod and my trusty Leapers 3x12x40 AOE Varmint Hunter Scope. Now I have two of these scopes exactly the same, and the other one is sitting on the Diana 177. I now need a new scope for my QB78, <laughs> um, but uh, that's okay. I'll be shooting this one a lot more for a while. Um, threaded muzzle end, bolt action, repeater. Um, the repeating function, cock it, load it, away you go, fire, single shot tray. Push the tray to the, from the right side to the left. It's held in with a magnet on the receiver as well as a little one here and it's magnetic. Then you can take your seven round magazine, because the 22 caliber version, of course, this is seven round mag, and slide it in place, and you now have a multi-shot repeater, where you can just cock load, cock load, cock load, until you're out of all your seven rounds, and then you load her back up, do it again. Buy spare mags, by the way, I would. Okay, not because of, you know, eventually it's gonna wear out someday, which, you know, everything does. Um, but if you want to keep the action going with repeat action fun, get a couple extra mags and then you can have a bunch of these loaded up. Now these are about 20 some dollars a piece extra, which is no big deal. They are made out of all metal with the exception of the top cover. I don't know about the internals. I have not taken one of these apart, nor am I going to until one of them actually fails. And then we'll see what makes them really tick at that point. But my rule is if it ain't broken, don't mess with it. Un unless you're doing something else, but in this case, I'm not gonna mess with this. Um, now, threaded muzzle end, of course. For the US people, they get to have a silencer slash suppressor on the gun, which actually does about a six decibel cut in noise, which is not bad, actually, but six dB really isn't a whole lot. And I've listened to, the, to it on video with and without the silencer suppressor, and there's not a whole lot of noise difference. And these guns, to begin with, really aren't that noisy. In fact, even my 177 of this gun is extremely quiet, which is quite surprising, and it has the same cap. 
Now, you can actually unthread the cap, get yourself a threaded on um, muzzle brake, okay, um, that has whatever style to it, and away you go, and you can give it a more sniper look, etc. Um, and as mentioned before, when I can afford a lathe again, I will be making threaded on muzzle brakes, not just for this gun, but for many guns and normal muzzle brakes as well, among other mod parts, okay? Now, um, adjustable trigger. From the factory, this thing is set up extremely light, um, and I love it, okay? And it is metal, by the way, so is the cross block safety, also metal. Um, the entire gun is metal with the exception of the stock is synthetic. Uh, the rear sight itself, which you have to remove if you're putting on a honking scope like this at least, um, that's a combination of metal and plastic. Um, and of course you've got a combination here of the two on your cap, no big deal. Other than that you've got a plastic front sight. This cap, by the way, that threads on is metal. Um, but yeah. Very minimal plastic, which is nice because I'm not a huge fan of plastic to begin with, but I do love this stock. For a synthetic stock, I love the stock. It's got really nice stippling that grips you, so even with sweaty fingers, um, you're going to be fine. You're going to get a good solid grip. You've got nice stippling down in here as well. Um, the gun is easy to handle for pretty much any shooter. It's not extremely heavy. It is a full-sized rifle. Okay. Um, it's not an over full size like some of the bohemus on my wall, but it's still a good sized normal full size rifle. Okay, um, it is not an ambidextrous stock, um, although you, you can shoot left handed or right handed and absolutely no interference whatsoever with holding the gun. The difference is, is you have a cheek piece on this side, which I find cheek pieces are absolutely useless anyway. I have guns that have an ambidextrous stock with you know the dual cheek piece or just no cheek piece period on either side i have no use for a cheek piece it does me no justice to to help me out any so why bother um so you know i'm a left-handed shooter so i don't have the cheek piece on this side but i don't care i'm like this anyway so my cheek is on top okay um so yeah uh for you righties though you might like the cheek piece because you're gonna you know, do this sort of thing or whatever, and maybe you prefer the cheek piece. I don't care. Um, the bolt is an over-length, oversized bolt, which is nice too. You know, very strong as well. Um, from what I understand, if the information on YouTube is correct at least, um, this would be a second variant bolt design, which is much thicker, stronger, and durable, okay, compared to the first version. Um, because apparently there was some problems with the first version, at least on the Storm Rider. I believe that gun was. Um, now, you're not going to find much uh, in the way of videos on the Trail Scouts, which is another reason why I wanted to check this one out too, uh, because I already have the 177 version, which I haven't actually really found anything on the 177. I did find the 22 on a guy's channel. Um, he went through, I think it was 16 or 18 different pellets, and he still wasn't entirely happy with the pellet that the gun seemed to group the best with because the grouping was still a little bit too much in his opinion which i would agree with however at the same time i did mention to him on his channel try some other pellets because you know the pellet the gun does choose the pellet okay you can be a fan of one brand of pellets and have 60 versions of their pellets it doesn't mean your gun's gonna like any of them either you know or like them very well if you're thinking about high precision target shooting for targets like paper targets you know um, or small game hunting and pest control you need the best accuracy possible and the way to get there is a few different ways number one you got to have a decent scope okay now this is above decent even though it's an under two hundred dollar scope it's the leapers three by twelve by forty aoe um, it also has uh, locking turrets as well as resetting to re-zero once you've dialed in. Um, it has a parallax of a uh, minimum of five yards all the way up to infinity. Uh, parallax adjustability is a big thing. You've got to have that on a scope. Um, otherwise, yeah, a lot of scopes are preset at 50 yards, 100 yards, 200 yards, 30 yards. Who the heck knows, right? They all vary. Having the adjustable optical for the parallax allows you the best optimal chance of even sighting in your gun properly, let alone continuing to shoot it later on, okay? So that's kind of like a must-have feature on a scope. 
and this is an under $200 scope, okay? Um, High-riser high mounts as well are going to be a necessity, especially if you're going to go this big even on this gun, because you've got a pretty big bell up front, okay? Um, what else? Um, oh yes, bipod, definite must for accuracy. So the right pellet, a bipod, and scope, and the right pellet for the gun, or pellets. This one favors the Barracuda 21.14 grain pellets, and it knocks the gun back to 435, but I get 9 foot-pounds of energy. I get uh, 8 plus foot-pounds of energy with 14.5 gram RWS Super Point Extras. I did talk to Air Gun Source today about the Hades pellets in 22 cal because they've been out of stock for a while. Apparently they got a new batch in. They will be up on the website. Um, he figures if everything works out by tomorrow, in which case I'm going to order myself a couple of tins because uh, I need another tin at least uh, in the meantime for my 177 Diana and I want to try the 22s out in this and see if it likes them. If not, I do have other 22 caliber guns, okay, because the majority of my guns are 22 caliber. I'm a bit of a picky person. I like horsepower. I like knockdown power, right? But I have nothing against 177s either, okay? Um, anyway, so my overall opinion is about four and three quarter stars. Now, I have put up written review on Air Gun Source's website. Um, right now, I'm the only one with any reviews, and I have basically two reviews up there. The top one is the most recent, which covers this gun. The one below it is actually going to cover the 177 version. Uh, unfortunately, I can't put independent, separate reviews the way I would want to put them. It just says, add to your review. Um, I would like to do new reviews, but that's not how their site's set up. So anyways, you're going to have a lot to read about, okay? Um, if you're going to read the... the uh, written portion of it. Now on their site it shows four out of five stars. They don't give me the ability availability to go four and a quarter, four and a half, four and three quarters, etc. Okay, but I would say four and three quarters definitely there. Okay. With only two little pet peeves. One is the barrel band where it is placed. The other of course is the um, O ring uh, on the cap. Um, that's another issue. I have written Diana myself about both. I've not heard anything back, so I don't know if they're ignoring me or what the case is, but I have at least taken my steps and I have written them about these two problems. Um, and it, it's, you know, even the, uh, I believe it's the Storm Rider, if I'm correct. Let me just check, but I think the Storm Rider would be in the same boat uh, for the barrel band issue. And now I am going to be getting a Storm Rider when I can get my hands on one. Um, and that's going to be a while because of the expense, because you got to buy the gun and um, a manual hill pump at least. And you you got to pump it up like 75 times for a full charge. So it's going to be like, I'm going to be getting some exercise. Um, anyways, yeah, the Storm Rider, um, from what I'm seeing here, the barrel band is also in the same place. So it's going to be the same kind of an issue with that gun. Now I've heard, I've seen some guys shooting the Storm Rider because there are videos on that, but just, you know, really there's um, a little bit on the one channel um, that I've talked about. And of course I have a lot of videos on my channel with these two guns and there'll be a lot more we still have to cover on this gun on other videos as well. So stay tuned for those. Um, the Storm Rider though, um, I've seen people shoot this thing out to 100 yards. Uh, now, of course, this is a PAL rated version uh, from what I gather in the videos, not the non-PAL version. But at 100 yards, the grouping that uh, I seen, the person thought was acceptable. Well, I'm sorry, but when a pellet is way over here, the next one's here, the next one's over here, oh, look, I think you got a bullseye there. That's not acceptable, okay? It definitely isn't. Um, you know, the tighter the group, the more acceptable. Otherwise, you're not going to hit the broad side of a barn, basically. It's going to be uh, like a shooting match. Like play, it's like playing Russian roulette every time. So obviously the person did not have um, the proper ammo for the gun, okay, which I did mention to that person as well. Is, to me, it looks more like that to me is not acceptable. I'm sorry. Um, you know, because if I was looking at a review on a gun and I see a spread like that, 
you know, at a specific range, and it's that kind of a grouping, it's like, mm, this isn't acceptable. Um, and many other people, you know, they, they agree the same way. Accuracy and dead accuracy, these guns are more than capable of doing. And I believe the Storm Rider is capable of the same level of accuracy as the two Trail Scouts in each caliber, okay? It's a matter of you have a limited range to every gun, which is true, regardless of the power it puts out. But if you don't have the right pellet and it's not dialed in right, what are you going to expect, right? It's going to have a really wicked spread. Um, so, you know, and you may find too that your gun dials in, say, 20 or 30 yards with a specific pellet for dead on accuracy, but when you get out, say, 50 yards away, now things are spreading apart. It's not that that pellet is not friendly for the gun. You've maxed out the distance of that gun with that pellet. You may find another pellet that will allow you that extra distance and still get a tight group back again. So that's another thing to make consideration of. But when you're shooting even at 10 meters, which is where the majority of my shooting is done, is between 10 and 20 meters. If I don't get a really nice tight group, and I get shots that are going here, 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 and I get something like the size of a quarter or the size, you know, nickel size really upsets me too, um, or anything bigger than that, well, obviously that pellet will never sight in on the gun no matter what range you're at, okay? Um, and this is how I've discussed about the whole thing with um, grouping and how grouping works with guns and so on. I mean, I've been shooting these things for 42 years and I've been fixing and modding them for about half that amount of time. And I've learned a lot of stuff over the years and always learning more and more new stuff all the time. So here's the thing, four and three quarters, definitely worth every penny of that 250 bucks. Do keep uh, your eyes on my channel for more videos on both Dianas, among other new goodies that are coming along um, in the future. There's gonna be a lot more air gun stuff, trust me. I'm nowhere near getting my collection back up to where it used to be. Um, so I'm going to have to make some more space in my closet for storing some guns at least because um, I'm pretty much out of wall space. Um, but certainly we're going to have a lot more guns on this channel, that's for sure. Um, I'm really enjoying, uh, since I got full blast back into the hobby, um, you know, and to me this is a hobby, but it's also fun. It's also, you know, I want to do pest control and small game hunting now too. And in Canada, we are allowed to use air guns for small game. We're just not allowed to use air guns for large game, okay? And so the rules are different too, which is kind of nice, and uh, which is cool. Um, now, as far as anything else goes, um, feel free to ask. I mean, I will do my utmost best to answer, as I always do. Um, so if you do have questions, they belong in the comments below, um, and I'll help you out any way I can. Uh, there will be a video too, just to let you know, where I'm going to take apart um, one of the Dianas uh, to show you how exactly I mounted the bipod in the position where it's in, because there's some little tiny modification you have to do inside. And I wanna show you how to go about doing that so you don't screw it up, okay? It's very important that you do this properly um, if you wanna have your bipod, say, in the same position and mine's in, okay? And I'm gonna go over the proper tools, the drill size you're gonna need. I'm going to show you the exact um, mount for the sling mount that I've used in this because you don't use a normal sling mount. You need one that's threaded with a nut, okay? And that's uh, a very critical thing when you're dealing with synthetic stocks versus wood stocks, um, okay? Um, and yes, we will have some videos eventually shooting with this mag as well to see what the POI was, is actually gonna be like with this gun um, between using the single low tray and uh, the mag with the same ammo and see if it reacts the same way my other Diana did. Um, I'm kind of hoping it doesn't, but if it does, well, then at least we know and we know we where we have to tweak things. Um, but in the meantime, thanks so much for watching. Um, hope you enjoyed the review on this video. I know it's like 20 minutes long, but you guys know I'm thorough and I got to get to the nitty gritties, okay? Um, and I've probably missed one or two things to talk about, but otherwise, I think I've pretty much got her covered. We've got a nice hairy trigger, we've got lots of metal, we've got a little bit of plastic, we have a barrel band that's in the wrong spot, but it's not a deal breaker, because once you tighten up those screws, 
you are going to find that this thing stiffens right up all the way across. Although I still say the barrel band is still in the wrong place. We have the little pet peeve of the O-ring uh, in the piercing um, cap. Um, other than that, we don't have any negatives about the gun. Everything else is positive and it has plenty of horsepower in it. Um, like I said, I mean, check out the unboxing and crony video. You'll see what kind of speeds I got out of this gun from an 8.4 grain pellet right on up to the Barracudas, which are my heaviest pellet that I currently have right now. Um, and we will try some probably a little bit heavier pellets and maybe some even lighter if we can find something lighter than uh, 8.4 grain and a 22 caliber pellet um, and see what kind of maximizing we can really do with this. And in case you are wondering offhand, but I'm pretty sure I covered it in the unboxing, the PAL rated version of this gun is rated at 550 feet per second. Okay, now these are all based on standard pellet weights. Okay, so 7.4 grain for 177, 14.3 is the standard weight um, in the uh, 22 cal. Okay, the 177 rifle is rated at 660 feet per second uh, in 177 for a PAL rated version or over 500 feet per second. Okay, um, these things, they do an amazing, amazing job, even for being uh, a sub-500 classed air gun. They get very close to that 500 mark, which is nice. They will definitely step over and roll it with, when you use much lighter pellets, but keep in mind, when you use a much lighter pellet, um, then you are gaining speed, but you are losing energy. You are going to lose out on accuracy as well. Um, and capable distances when you're using light, light pellets, okay? Um, and again, your gun will choose what it favors for accuracy as well. So uh, before even adjusting any sights on the gun initially, go with open sights like I did at 10 meters, find out what's gonna group the tightest by always aiming at the exact same precise spot. Um, make sure you got a lot of targets on hand because you're gonna have to you know, use a different target each time. Um, and testing pellets, so have a variety set up and find out what your gun particularly likes because no two guns, even, even two Diana 22s, are not going to shoot the same pellets the same way, okay? Or 177 version, so on, so on, okay? Regardless, brand, make, model, doesn't matter. Anyways, um, also if you're not subscribed, please do so and click that bell for notifications um, and stay tuned for a lot more. So, see ya.